Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. We're following breaking news this afternoon from Detroit's west side. That is where a body has been found and a police investigation is underway. We'll have the latest. Plus, we're learning more this afternoon about that deadly accident where an off-duty Detroit police officer and a female passenger were killed this morning. Brandon? Taking a look out there right now, you might not know it, but we do have a severe storm threat in spots today. It looks so nice out there. So we just took a live look there at the uh, Detroit skyline. It does. A little deceiving. It's a, what we call a dry slot. So we had mm. some clouds and a little bit of rain earlier, and now we've hit this lull. Okay. But let us not get caught up in the lull. Let us uh, be proactive with these storm chances. So we have heat, humidity coming in. We have winds that are picking up 82 degrees. We've come up uh, about six degrees just from the last hour because of some clearing. And it's not always a great thing when you have ingredients for stormy weather. The winds 10 to 20 miles an hour out of the west southwest, bringing in some of that uh, more warm, muggy air. And take a look in Jackson County right now. Some rain and thunder showers, not of the severe variety, but some thunder and lightning going on with that. Then we start to see this cold front coming at us closer and closer. So that barrier between warm and cold, that clash, is what will cause some of the storms to fire up and be potentially wind damage producers, lightning certainly, maybe even some small hail. Not for everybody. 85, the projected high, muggy, breezy. The stormy window between 1 and 5 p.m. Uh, and then things will gradually get a lot better. But the Storm Prediction Center has reduced its risk area. It's Wayne, Monroe, Lenaway counties now in a marginal risk for severe weather. But I think we all need to be ready as the model kind of shows here. It may not just be isolated this afternoon to those southern counties. So what's your best weapon today? It is the local forecasters app. Make sure you download this for free under double WDIV in your app store. You'll have interactive radar. Any warnings, alerts coming right to your device. Everod. All righty, Brandon, thank you. We want to get to the other breaking story that we're following this afternoon. It's from Detroit's west side, and that is where a woman's body has been found, right in the area of Midland and Mansfield Streets, and that's just west of Greenfield. Police telling us here at Local 4 that the woman was between 30 and 40 years old and appears to have been killed and her body was discovered by a neighbor. Right now, a possible motive or a suspect description has not been released, but as police get new information and pass along to us, we will, of course, pass it along to you. We're learning more this afternoon about that deadly accident that happened earlier this morning on Woodward Avenue, right at the State Fair intersection. Detroit Police Chief James Craig confirming that off-duty police officer, 27-year-old James Hearn, was killed, along with a female passenger. Hearns' 11-year-old daughter was also in the back seat of the vehicle at the time of that crash. She had minor injuries. Local Force Rob Maloney joins us now live with more on this story. And Rod, do we have any idea what would have caused this crash? Nobody knows at this point, Everett. More questions asked than answered in this situation. Now we have two people dead. Uh, we're told that the car was not traveling particularly quickly. Let's go to the video now. Uh, only local four cameras were there this morning uh, at this location early on uh, as it happened about 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning. Um, and what we're told is that the car was moving uh, on uh, on Woodward at about seven and a half mile road and all of a sudden kind of veered and and uh, hit either a light standard or a pole. We're not quite sure about that either, but that's where things stand right now. And this was a four and a half year uh, police veteran from the city of Detroit. His name is in fact James Hearn. Uh, he was in the uh, car with his daughter and uh, he and his daughter apparently had been out fishing during the day. Let's hear from Chief James Craig about this officer and about what he views as a tragedy here this morning. Another tragedy, uh, I would tell you that we lose a lot of the good ones. Uh, James was what I would call the ultimate community police officer. He loved his job. All right, well, he worked in the 12th precinct for the first three and a half years of his career, and then he came down here to the waterfront uh, at the downtown services uh, precinct here, uh, where he worked on crowd control. Uh, he also uh, worked on tra traffic up here on, uh, on Jefferson, but he also was very involved in the police, police athletic league. 
and he'd been in a PAL uh, program, volunteer program during the day, and then went fishing with his daughter, uh, and it was at the end of a very long day. He was due to come to work here this afternoon. Uh, he will not. He has passed, and the chief says that the, chief, uh, that the uh, department is poorer for it. Now, we're still looking to get some more information about him and about the situation, and we'll have that updated for you on Local 4 News at 5. Reporting live in downtown Detroit, Rod Maloney, Local 4. So incredibly sad. Rod, thank you for the update. An investigation continues after a 26-year-old Chinese man exploded a small homemade bomb outside of the U.S. Embassy in Beijing today. Here's NBC's Kelly Kobiea with an update from investigators. Just seconds after the explosion shows smoke filling the street right outside the U.S. Embassy gates. On a crosswalk, a possible scorch mark. Police roped off a car and collected evidence. A witness said the blast blew out a police car windshield. This morning, Chinese authorities are not calling it a bomb, but a firework device, saying only the assailant was injured, a 26-year-old man from Inner Mongolia. The blast rattling this busy Beijing district at 1 in the afternoon. The device detonated on the southeast corner of the embassy compound in a public space where people line up for visas and other appointments. The Beijing embassy, opened by President George W. Bush in 2008, is one of the biggest and most heavily fortified U.S. embassies in the world, sprawling over 10 acres with a bulletproof glass wall. Chinese authorities have named the suspect, but only by his last name. They say he's been detained and is in the hospital for injuries to his hand. No specifics on motive. They're simply calling this an isolated security incident. Kelly Cobiella, NBC News, London. We're learning more about Sergio Marchionne's health before he died. An Italian website is reporting the Fiat Chrysler CEO had a stroke during an invasive surgery for shoulder cancer in late June. Marchionne went into a coma during that operation, but the website claims Marchionne had been diagnosed with the cancer a long time ago, but didn't tell the company about how serious his illness was. Marchionne passed away in a Swiss hotel. He is credited for saving Fiat and Chrysler. Two construction workers are recovering this afternoon after being hit while working along I-75. Three cars crashed on the highway just before Allen Road on Wednesday afternoon, and officials are saying the cause of that crash was that the cars were following each other too closely and not leaving enough space between them to react properly on the roads. The expressway had to be closed for hours because of that crash, but thankfully both workers are expected to be okay. MDOT is reminding people to slow down and to stay alert, especially when you're driving in a construction zone. Betsy DeVos's $40 million yacht was vandalized over the weekend. That is according to the Toledo Blade newspaper. It happened at the Huron Boat Basin in Ohio. The captain of the 163-foot yacht called the police, saying that somebody had untied the sequest from the dock, setting it adrift. The crew eventually got control of the yacht, but not before causing it an estimated five to ten thousand dollars in damage. Police are still searching for the person responsible. Detroit's historic Brush Park neighborhood is getting some major residential developments. The project totals one hundred and two million dollars, and the plan is to build three residential developments called Brush House, the Brush Eight and Brush and Watson. The project will create 367 new residential units. Mayor Mike Duggan was there this morning saying that this really is just the beginning. This is part of a broader plan. Over the next five years, there will be 1,800 new housing units, more, uh, more than a third permanent and affordable housing. We are building one of the largest mixed income communities anywhere in the United States. The project will also add 8,500 square feet of retail and is expected to break ground late next year. Very exciting to see new developments here. All right, coming up, a big announcement about this year's Triple Crown winner, Justify. We'll tell you might, why he might have run his last race. Plus, we've got the latest surrounding the NFL national anthem controversy. Hear what one team owner has to say about players who protest during the anthem. And banned from the White House, why one network reporter was told she could not take part in an event on Wednesday after she questioned President Trump. That's coming up next.